And for now, I'd lo love you to help me welcome our next speaker to the stage screen. This man uh, is the author of Seven Levels of Communication. He also is a creator of the Generosity Generation and the Army of Ambassadors. And if you have not read his book, I highly, highly recommend it. It's been the number one book for real estate on Amazon for at least the past three years, maybe more. And you know, if every realtor is reading it, every loan officer should probably read it also so that you know exactly what they're hearing and learning. Uh, and so with that, I'd like you to welcome to the screen stage, Mr. Michael Mann. How's it going? There you go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I appreciate it. Michael J. Mayer here calling in from Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, I'll tell you, I appreciate you having me on. It's always a pleasure. I hope you're well. Everybody, everybody safe at home? Absolutely. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I, I think uh, I can, I can uh, do this any way you want, but I, I think one thing is, is how do we want to remember this quarantine times? Do we want to remember it as a mess or as a success? And, and what does success look like in the quarantine times? And I've created an acronym here uh, for success if we want to run down through that. Uh, of course, I have an acronym for almost anything, but you, you, I'll take your lead. That sounds great. Yeah, if you'd like to run through your, the acronym, uh, that, that'd be awesome. I'd love to hear what your take on mess versus success. So I'll tell you, I've got some words here, and I would like people to, in the comments on the Facebook Live, I want you to tell me which of these words best describe where you are at mentally right now. So, so here are the words. There are going to be seven words. So the first word is distress. Are you in distress? I almost put duress in there, but duress is even stronger than duress. So we'll say distress or depress, or mess, or stress, or recess, or progress, or success. Where are you at on that spectrum of emotions and feelings and thoughts when it comes to the quarantine times? Are you in distress? Are you in depression? Are you in a mess? Are you in stress? Are you in recess? Are you in progress or are you in success? And I will tell you that, you know, I'm going to start with success and we'll talk about success. And Nick, if you could let me know like what some of the answers are as they, uh, as they come through. I think the big thing is that everybody's been told to take a pivot. In fact, we had a Zoom party last Friday night and we had a drinking game. And the drinking word was pivot. Anytime somebody said pivot, somebody had to drink. Well, you know, after a case of beer that I drank, we needed to figure out a different drinking word because it wasn't working anymore. But, it, but it's everybody talking about a pivot. And, and, and I want everybody to know that, that success is not a 180 degree turn. You don't have to do everything different during the quarantine times. You don't have to make a gigantic pivot. And then, I mean, how would you like to do a pivot? And then at the end of quarantine, you do another pivot. Well, that just means you're in the same spot. 180 degrees, 180 degrees, you're just running in circles. Success is not a 180 degree turn. Success is a one degree tweak. It is a one degree tweak. And it's one of those where we can either choose, the problem is with the 180 degree turn, is that you end up taking all these circles. I'm not sure if there has ever been a more content rich time on social media. Like there are so many free classes, so many, it is amazing the content that is out there. I see a lot of content and I see very little implementation. So it's like what I would wish for everybody here I have to tell you, Mortgage Living Legends, that's a very lofty title. I'm not sure if I quite uh, fit yet in that category, but it's one of those where it's like, you know, if you're going to be a living legend or you want to be a living legend, and, and the key word there is living, I think, is you want to implement, and it's about instant implementation. So, but you can't implement everything. You know, you just heard a great speaker. If 
followed by another great speaker, followed by another great speaker. And, and, and you're getting a lot of great ideas. Take one, not even three, just take one and put it into place. And, and that's a difference. Like one thing that you do a little bit better every day. I don't know if, you know, there's 366 days this year, even though we feel like March was the longest year of our life, if you know what I'm talking about right there. But like, it's one of those where, like, if we take the number one and we take it to the 366th power, one to the 366th power. Now you take most numbers to the 366th power, you're gonna get a really big number. But let's say we do the same thing every day for 366 days. What are we going to get different? We're going to get one to the 366, which by the way is one times one times one times one, 366 times, it equals one. And I know that Nick promised you that there would be no math and I just totally blew that. But I have a point here is what if we took 1.01 to the 366 power? 1.01, I mean, a slight difference, just 1% change on a daily basis. What is that number? And I've had people guess when I do this live and people will say, well, it's like 2.41 or 3.1 or what, you know what? It's 38, it's 1.01 to the 366 power, a one degree tweak, a 1% change on a daily basis gets you 38 X results. Don't tell me about 3x, 5x, or 10x. It is 38x just by a one degree tweak. So we need to understand, we need to just make one little tweak. And I'm not here to change your mind 180 degrees or talk about a pivot or a shift or anything. I'm going to talk about a one degree tweak that we can make. So I'm going to give you an acronym for success. And this will help you be more successful during the quarantine times. What does success look like during the quarantine times? So the S, the first S is structure. What is the enemy of a mess? What is the enemy of a, of a chaos? And, and the thing about an enemy of a mess is a place for everything, right? Which leads to the answer, which is structure. What is the structure in your life? Now, the first week, maybe you, you were out of structure. But what I would wish upon you is to develop new rituals and to develop new structure. Get some structure. One thing that we did immediately, as soon as we saw it coming, we created a daily show called The Daily Dose. I do The Daily Dose of Positivity and Productivity live in my Generosity Generation group every single day, Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. So it's frequency, it's consistency, it's structured, and people could rely on it. And, and so they come at one o'clock, we're done at 1.30, 1.45, sometimes 1.55, and then we have instant implementation time right after the daily dose. So they're gonna implement one thing right afterwards. And I've always believed that we need to make the centerpiece of our day the masterpiece of our day. So let's make the, that, that kind of that 10 a.m., to 2 p.m., the best, like the most moving forward part of our day. And that's why we did the daily dose. So I gave our community structure right from the beginning. I'm a huge believer in structure. I believe in time blocking, not like most people believe in time blocking. I believe in two things on time blocking, is block two or three things a day. Don't block the whole day. The other thing that I'm a believer in is that time blocking isn't necessarily about blocking time. It's about blocking distractions. It's about blocking the things that screw up your time and your schedule. So that's one of the things that you really need to look at. And honestly, in today's world, I've found that I have less distractions and I can be more focused. So the other thing is rituals. What's your morning ritual look like? And I'm sure the first few days, especially if you have kids, it was nuts. I get it. But now I'm hoping that you have kind of established your morning ritual and your nightly rituals. And, and I will tell you right now that if you are struggling, if you are in distress, depress, mess, or stress, 
the number one suggestion that not only I would give you, but a psychiatrist or a psychologist would give you is to figure out what time you're going to go to bed and figure out what time you're going to get up in the morning and stick to it. Is your time, I don't care if it's 11 p.m., midnight, whatever it is, is it 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., noon? I don't care. Like, I don't care. You're like, but you're the morning ritual guy, right? You're the miracle morning for real estate agents guy. You're like, you know, you're about getting up early. No, no, I'm not about getting up earlier. I'm about getting up better. Like, get up better. And you know how you get up better? Structure. Figure out your bedtime or what we call dim time and figure out your wake up time and, and set your alarm and stick to it. But nobody's, you know, nobody's making me get out of bed. Nobody, it's like, no, trust me, you will feel better. You'll get more done. You're healthier. Here's the biggest key. Your immune system will be stronger if you go to a structured nighttime bedtime and a structured wake up time. So structure, the enemy of chaos, is structure. The enemy of a mess is structure. Please, dear God, get yourself some structure. The you in success is you. Like, take care of you. You've got your physical you, you've got your mental you, and you've got your social you. And so there are really kind of seven things here to take care of. One is fitness. And I mean physical fitness. That doesn't mean you're going to have a six pack by the end of the quarantine. It means that you're going to drink less six packs maybe during the quarantine, though that has not been my case. But I will tell you on the physical fitness is take a walk. Dear God, get outside. You're like, stay at home. No, that doesn't mean you stay in a locked room in your basement in a fetal position. One of the F words I'm going to tell you today is not fetal. I'm telling you, it's not. Get up, get outside, enjoy nature, make it happen. The other thing is financials right? Take care of your financials. And there are 5,463,361 videos on expense reduction right now. So you will find what you need out there. I'm not going to go into it now, but it has been good for me. We did an insurance review and saved thousands on our car, home, and our rental property. So do an insurance review. Dave Ramsey told me to do that. So I do whatever he tells me to do. Faith, take care of your faith, right? Get back into faith. You have no excuse not to watch church because you don't even have to go to church. It goes to you. Church is coming to you. It's in, your, it's in your TV every day, all day. Fun, take care of fun. Like, what do you do for fun? Find something that you do for fun and do it. Family, right? Some of you, you know, here's what's interesting. I truly believe, everybody's saying like, there's gonna be a baby boom in like nine months. And I'm going to tell you, yeah, there's going to be a baby boom just in time for the divorce to go final. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, that's what I'm seeing, right? Is that, yeah, everybody's loving each other and everybody's hating each other. So, but I'm going to tell you one of the things that goes with the structure and family that I've really enjoyed is we have actually blocked in alone time. So Max, my 11 year old son has alone time. We're not going to bother him. He can play Fortnite or whatever he does. And Sherry, my wife, has alone time. She has her couch uh, downstairs that she enjoys hanging out on, watching a little TV. And I have my alone time, which I need. I'm an introvert, so I really feel the need for that alone time. We have date time. We have uh, family activity time, which typically re revolves around baseball. And we have that here in about an hour and a half. Feelings. This is one of those things where it's like, take care of you. Take care of your feelings. Like, you need to be reflective and self-aware about what you're feeling at all times. And it's like, why are you feeling that way? And if you see yourself or feel yourself going from stress to mess to depress, then I'm telling you, you need to call someone. You need to do a FaceTime or a Zoom, call your mom, call your sister. The, the number one thing you can do if you feel like you're falling back into depress or distress is to help another human being. That's the instant cure is just go help someone. Call somebody, see how you can help, help them and call it good for the day. It's the magic pill. You wanted the magic pill? There it is. And the last one is focus. If I would wish upon you one thing, it would be focus. And focus is another acronym. Focus is finish one challenge until success. Like 
what is the one thing you can do today such that by doing it, everything else in your life or in your business would either become unnecessary or easier? Like, what is that one thing you could do today that would make everything else unnecessary or easier? And you can figure out what that one thing is, which leads us to the C, the first C in success, which is clarity. So here are some clarifying questions. What is the one thing such that by doing it, everything else becomes easier and or unnecessary? That is straight from Gary Keller's The One Thing book. What is your biggest challenge right now? What is your biggest challenge right now? Get really focused about that. What is your biggest frustration right now? What is your biggest opportunity right now? What is the biggest opportunity? I will tell you our opportunity was a daily podcast. Like, we were all over the Daily Dose, brought to you by Referrals Podcast, and that was an opportunity for us. And here's what happened. I built great relationships. Some of you have probably heard some of these names. Uh, on the Daily Dose, just in the last two weeks, has been Bob Berg, Todd Duncan, Steve Harney, and Dave Childers, uh, Tim Brahim, Nick Santonastasso, Sean Rawls, Jeff Fitzer, like Hal Elrod's on next week, you know? So, so I have to tell you, that's the beauty is the opportunity here is I got to reconnect with a lot of these people I should probably stay in relationship with, but simply hadn't because we were kind of all busy doing the same thing, which was speaking on stage around the world. So the thing here is clarity. You need to get clear on three things, people, place, and things. And what do we need to get clarity on? what raises our energy and what lowers our energy. So what are the people or who are the people and what are the places and things that raise our energy? There are places in your house that will lower your energy. Like if the laundry room has a ton of laundry all over the place and it's messy, it will lower your energy. If you, there, a really orderly room will raise your energy. Uh, a, a open, airy, and bright room will raise your energy. And then, but the biggest thing is, who are the people that raise your energy? Some of you know negative Nellies. You know Debbie Downers. This is the time to put them on the wait list. Like, they can wait to talk to you. You don't need to talk. You need to be really speaking with people who fulfill you and fill you with energy and that is one of the things we're doing the daily dose is we're helping our generosity generation ambassadors find and identify the people they know who fill them with energy. Like who are the people, you know, who, who needs to be on your team and who do you need to kick off the boat or the bus? So, um, and then, you know, what, what lowers your energy? You know, what are the things? And here's the other thing. What are the things that fill you with energy? Like, what is it that you're doing? Like something I've really discovered is paperwork is toxic to Michael Mayer. Like paperwork, like if it is like signing papers, reading paper, like I don't want to do that. It's like, it's the worst thing in the world. So you know what? We've kind of found this system where Sherry reads it. She bottom lines it for me. And then I'll either sign it or, you know, we'll make a decision based off the paperwork. So I don't want to deal with contracts. I just want the contracts. You know what I'm saying right there? So clarity. The second C in success is communicate. Of course, I wrote the seven levels of communication. You had to guess that one of the C's would be communicate. Communicate more, communicate better. You know what you would hate to have happen is you would hate to call your best friend or a friend and call them and just check them check on them. And you're like, hey, listen, I just want to check on things. And then they go, yeah, yeah. You know what? Joe, the mortgage professional, just called me five minutes ago. And Joe, the mortgage professional, is your biggest competitor. That would be the worst. You know what's the best? Is when you call and they, you have a conversation where it's, hey, I was just thinking about you. How are you guys dealing with this? Like, what hacks do you have? Are there any like secrets to success that you guys have? Or what have you found to be good in this whole thing? You know, what have you been pleasantly surprised about? Have that conversation. And they're going to maybe ask you, hey, listen, how's real estate or how's the mortgage? How's it affected you and your job? Wow, like that's 
That's essentially a conversation that leads to a piece of business. Um, but the other part of it too is, is then Joe, your competitor calls them next week because they hear this, this uh, episode. And guess what? You've already called. You know where you don't want to be? Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth. But the thing, the best place to be is first. Be the first one to call. Like call them before their mom calls them. Communicate more. Communicate better. And then the E. The E in success, and for those of you that know me or have seen me speak, you, you know it's energy. Everything is energy. We are energy. Everything is energy. Literally, if you boil down everything in the universe, it's energy. I, I don't want to get too deep into that. But the thing is, is, is we really need to tap into, we have a great opportunity. They call it the great pause. And I love that. that it, some people are calling it the great float. And what a, what a great terminology, because when you're floating or you're pausing, you have the opportunity to really take inventory. And we need to really take inventory right now with what fulfills us, what fills us with energy, and what sucks the living energy out of us. And you know what? Life's too short. We need to get rid of the stuff that does not fulfill us. And you're like, yeah, but it's my boss. Get rid of your boss. Get rid of your boss. Or have a conversation with the boss that leads you down the path to correcting that energy issue. And you might say, well, it's my spouse. Communicate more and better. It's communication. Most of the time when you have an energy problem, it's a communication problem. That's another story for another day. But the other thing on energy is many of you might be extroverts. And there's introverts and extroverts. Introverts tend to get energy by retreating. Honestly, as an introvert, I have been practicing for the quarantine my entire life. I was so ready for this. Like, this is so good. You mean I got to stay at home? That's so cool. Thank you. You know, and, and it's like, you mean my wife and Mandy and my team and my staff of 40 cannot schedule me for things outside the home? You mean they can't do that? This has been the greatest time of my entire life, people. So here's the other thing. Many of you are extroverts. Extroverts get energy from people. You got to do a Zoom party. You got to do FaceTime. You got to do Zoom. You, 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 you cannot just sit in your house and bang your head against the wall and have that huge cave issue, right? You got you to gotta filter it. And I will tell you, you got to socialize. FaceTime is it great. Zoom is great. Energy. It's just like everything is energy. As long as we understand that, it's like, guess what? Here's the thing. You might have some clients who suck your energy and you might go, well, it's just them. No, you know what it is? It's communication. It's a lack of communication. Either the expectations were not set or reset or the expectations have changed somewhere in the relationship. And that means with your referral partners, and that also means with your clients or borrowers. The, the, the cure to energy in many cases is communication. So that goes under communicate more and better, energy. All right, the last two S's in success. One is serve, and it's serve. Seek, seek to serve. Like you want to be worthy of referrals and worthy of a lot of business. Well, guess what? The word deserve, which is the derivative of worthiness, deserve. Notice the word deserve is really day serve, which is of service. If you want to deserve, serve. Serve to deserve. So get on the phone and call and seek the help. Get on Facebook and don't get on there to find an argument or a political thing that you could post about, but seek to serve, like literally look for people who need help, but I don't have that much money or I don't, you don't need money. I'm going to tell you one of the greatest things you can do to help someone is connect them to another human being that is positive and powerful. Connection is the key. It is, that can be your big gift of generosity is your team, your team of people, you know, so serve, look to help. The last S ladies and gentlemen, is strategy, strategy. You want success during the quarantine times? Strategy, change your strategy, add a strategy. And I'm gonna give you the strategy that I am now holding the entire generosity generation to. 
and that is create and lead a Facebook group. I don't care if there's two people in your Facebook group. You need to have an interest-based or a geographic-based Facebook group, period. Like it could be about roller coasters. It can be about Ferris wheels. It can be about softball. It can be about baseball. It can be about, or it can be a geographic based. I will tell you, Jana Caudell just started her Facebook group for Crown Point, Indiana. This is Crown Point, Indiana, right here between those two fingers. That's how big, she has 3,000 people in her Facebook group. You know why? Nobody had thought about doing Crown Point, help neighbors helping neighbors. Name your group. Think about it as your, your own private island. Well, there goes the whole show. Forcier showed up. I mean, like whatever I say doesn't matter anymore. So, uh, and see, that's what you, oh, there you go. And gone. And there he is. And gone. And he can't, no, there's no way he can help it. There's no way he's staying off. And, hey guys. Right. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> so change your strategy. And the strategy is create and lead a Facebook group. You need to have a community. If you had an announcement, if you had some big thing to say, like where the PP money is, right? Where the idle money is, where the CARES Stimulus Act money is, right? If you had an important announcement, where would you go to make that announcement? How would you make that announcement? You know what I'd do? I'd go to my Facebook group, do a video, do the announcement, and everybody I would want to know now knows. How would you do it? You would say maybe, well, I would email it to them. Yeah, and that's like throwing whatever you're saying into the trash can right? Because that it goes into spam or trash anyway. So it's one, how would you deliver the message? Well, I'd text them. You're going to text one person at a time times 30,000 or 3,000. It's going to take you forever. And you know what? The video might not go through. So the thing is, is that the biggest thing is, is I am, I am championing from the top of the mountain, create and lead your Facebook group. When, and, and yes, a lot of my clientele are realtors and I will tell you that when you got a real estate license, you said, I'm a leader. When you got that professional license, you, you, you raised your hand and you said, I'm a leader. You lead people through the transaction. I know a lot of lenders are listening to this. And the thing is, is when you got your mortgage license, people, I'm telling you something. This is the biggest loan they'll ever take in their life. You are a leader. You signed up to be a leader. You lead them through the biggest financial investment of their life. So own it, embrace it, cherish it. And what that means is create and lead a Facebook group. You need a Facebook group for your people to check on you. You need a Facebook group to check on your people. You need a Facebook group to announce events. You need a Facebook group to, uh, to tell success stories. You need a Facebook group to tell people that interest rates have gone down. You need a group to Tell them interest rates. Who are you telling? And you're like, well, I tell my Facebook friends. That's not what your Facebook friends signed up for. But the people that sign up for your Facebook group, they're there to learn more about you and the neighborhood. I have to tell you, uh, go Gilbert, 54,000 people. It's a realtor who has a group called Go Gilbert and Sh Shooty. And they have a group that has 54,000 people in it. And you're like, well, you know, do they get business from it? Yeah, to the tune of like 128 million a year, right? I know that's not great, but you know, Forcier couldn't live on it, but most of us could. So I think it's one of those where, you know, it's one of those where mess or success, the choice is yours. And what does success look like in the quarantine times? Well, it's the acronym success. Structure, you take care of you, C for clarity, C for communicate more, E for energy, S for serve, and the last S is for strategy. And I want to just make a, a, an overarching point about success in the quarantine times is please notice the acronym started with structure and it ended with strategy. If I had one thing that I would wish upon you is literally by the end of the quarantine times, you have added some structure to your life and you've added at least one strategy that has changed your business forever. And that's all I've got to say about that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here, man. That was, that was definitely incredible. I took two pages of notes. I'm going to have to go back. I'm going to have to go back through my notes and watch this recording when it's over with so I can make sure I really 
got everything you said. There's like a lot of things I want to make sure I really, really took it in. Well, I appreciate it. I, I did not know if this was going to be conversational or if it was presentation. The note said presentation, so I went into presentation mode. So I apologize if it was actually supposed to be more conversational. So I, no, no, uh, that was excellent. Yeah, that was, yeah. that was awesome for sure. Well, I appreciate it. And I can't wait to put mortgage living legend on my uh, resume from now on. And, and uh, uh, what a, what a tough, act, like what a thing to live up to, right? Uh, living legends. I was like, man, I got, I, I don't, I was, I was feeling very nervous coming onto this. Uh, so, and then I saw Forcier and I felt fine. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he is a living legend in the mortgage world. And so are you. Nick. I, I just want to let you know, I really appreciate the opportunity and uh, I, I hope it helps. I hope people go to joingengen.com. They join the generosity generation. They watch the daily dose and they, they implement. Uh, we're doing it every day uh, in, in the hopes that, that it can be kind of that centerpiece of their day and they can make the centerpiece of their day the masterpiece of their day. I used to be a one-man shop. I now have four loan officers under me. I have taken myself out of production, uh, so I just manage the team now. So if you think about it this way, b before the Legion, I was probably doing three, maybe five loans a month. Now I'm completely out. I don't even take applications anymore. I don't have to worry about where to get my next leads from because I can just turn on a Facebook ad just like that. I've never even thought about becoming like this overseeing uh, person. Uh, business before Legion, it was all about chasing the realtors. Um, you know, it was about, you know, trying to, you know, it's basically best begging for business. What I've learned in the Legion is, is something I've never even thought of before. It's, it's, it's a way to help me grow my business as well as my agents. And no agent's gonna be able to, you know, turn business down.